Hey, you did a great job last week, by the way. I'm Patrick. Look, look, Patrick, I'm just trying to keep this professional, okay? You got it. Uh, this week we're talking about Marvel Comics, the new Batman events, and George Takei. All this and more on the Weekly Comic News Show. So we, you want to like get drinks? Hey, Dennis, are they all like this? Pretty much. It's a big week for Batman fans as two major DC events were just announced. Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's long-awaited return to Batman will be featured in DC's Central Summer event, Dark Knight's Metal, premiering this August. The event series will be six issues long and will feature appearances by Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, and others. Snyder is touting the event as a major landmark, not just for Batman, but for DC's past, present, and future. Last week, George Takei announced that he's teaming up with IDW for a graphic novel. Beginning with his time in prison in a Japanese internment camp, the comic will follow Takei's life and career up until his activism in recent years. Although no illustrator has been announced, the beloved Star Trek actor's autobiographical book is scheduled for a 2018 release. Things aren't going so hot for Red Hood and his merry band of outlaws. Kicking off the Who is Artemis story arc, the team fears that a brutal dictator has gained possession of a weapon with the power of the sun. With strong allusions to real-world dictators and complicated geopolitics, Red Hood and the Outlaws looks like it's shaping up to be fresh, scary, and maybe even a bit insightful. All hell breaks loose in New Superman number 10 as Keenan accidentally unleashes the demons of the DU. We see the inevitable conclusion of Keenan's visit to America, a team-up of Superman. New Superman is a story of learning to be a hero, and this issue is an important part of that journey. It's time for the fight everyone's been waiting for. The Punisher finally faces off against the Merc with a mouth. What will cause both anti-heroes to gun for each other's throats? Deadpool vs. Punisher number one will surely bring the gory humor we'd all expect from this never-before-seen matchup. This week debuts two brand new X-Men comics. First is Weapon X number one, where the likes of Logan, Sabretooth, and Lady Deathstrike come together to stop a new threat. Then, get ready for some nostalgia as the original members of the X-Men return in X-Men Blue number one, with Jean Grey as the new leader and Magneto as team mentor. Both series are visually engaging and are an interesting start for new and old X-Men readers. This week sees the release of Black Panther and the crew. Teaming up with Storm, Luke Cage, Misty Knight, and Manifold, Black Panther investigates the murder of a Harlem activist and discovers secrets about the Marvel Universe. Last week, Comicsverse attended the Marvel press conference with the creative team behind the upcoming all-new Guardians of the Galaxy. We've learned that the comic will mix in fun and seriousness while introducing some dangerous cosmic threats. Visit our Facebook page to view the full details and some of our own questions that we've asked the team. Huge news for Image Comics this week, as Robert Kirkman announced that there will be an Invincible feature film. Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg are set to write, direct, and produce the feature film with Kirkman. The funny men of Superbad and Sausage Party fame have also directed episodes of Preacher on AMC and have dabbled in action, so we're very excited to see what comes out of this collaboration. This Wednesday, check out the debut of God Shaper from Boom Studios. Created by Eisner Award-nominated writer Simon Spurrier and artist Jonas Goonface, the limited series takes place in a world where technology stopped working and everyone has a personal god to do their bidding. Everyone except the main character, Ine. Instead, he can reconfigure other gods' powers to better suit the needs of their believers. God Shaper uses its fantastic premise to explore perceptions of class, counterculture, and morality in its gritty pastel universe. Newspaper comic Resist Volume 2 is coming out, and the creators want your help making it. Resist Volume 1 had creators Francois Mouly and Nadja Spiegelman take the anger people felt after the election and channel it into art. Now they want your submissions again, in the form of political comics, cartoons, and images, all in the name of resistance. The submission deadline is April 21st, with the comic coming out sometime this spring or summer. On March 31st, ICV2 published an interview with Marvel's Vice President of Sales, David Gabriel. In it, Gabriel cited diversity as one of the possible causes of Marvel's sagging sales. The comments made by Gabriel were considered controversial, as the comics industry has a rich history of diverse storytelling. It's also worth noting that diversity has often boosted comic sales and given readers some of our favorite storylines. We hope all publishers continue to promote diversity and equality. Everyone in the comics community deserves to be heard and represented. We return again to Staff Picks, where our team showcases a couple of our favorite comics coming out this week. Our picks this week are New Superman number 10 for its excellent growth of a great new character and Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. 
Let us know what you think of our picks and what your faves are this week. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you saw here, like and subscribe to the channel and check out comicsverse.com to find podcasts, reviews, interviews, and videos on everything from comics to movies to television to politics. Last week's question was, with the latest news of Joss Whedon directing a solo Batgirl movie, which Batgirl should it be, and what characters from Batman or the Birds of Prey should join her, and why? Here are the responses we got. This week's question is, who do you think should play Mark Grayson in the Invincible film? Let us know about your suggestions, and we'll feature them in our next weekly comic news show. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember, no matter who plays Mark Grayson, it shouldn't be Michael Sarah. It shouldn't. We like him, but it shouldn't be Michael Sarah. Nope. I just know because Seth Rogen, I know he's going to pick mm -hmm. him, so don't. Mm -mm.